Have you been keeping aquariums for quite some time, maybe a year or two or longer, and maybe you're a little bit bored, you wanna try something new? Well, today I've got a few ideas on different things that you can try to kind of reinvigorate yourself and get excited about aquariums again. Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from Tozawa Tanks. So as I shared, this is a video that's kind of more for that intermediate fish keeper. Um, there's a lot of videos out there about beginner fish keeping and what to do first and how to set things up, but maybe you've gotten your hands and elbows wet for some time and you wanna try some different things. So today we're gonna go through a few ideas on how to kind of make stuff exciting again. Now, this is a sponsored video and it's sponsored by one of my favorite companies, Into the AM. Now, they did send me some new shirts or they're sending me some new shirts. They've got some new designs, but I haven't received them yet. And I needed to get this filmed because I'm on my way to Aquashella and I wanted to get this out uh, for the release date. So um, you, there is a code down below where you get a discount and also they've got some summer sales going on. Into the AM is a team of artists and creators that formed an apparel company to share a common vision of developing premium apparel that elevates self-expression while focusing on comfort by using the highest quality materials and eco-friendly inks. Into the AM has dozens of cool designs to choose from, covering many categories including t-shirts and tank tops, hoodies and jackets, hats, and even joggers and shorts. Use the link and discount code below to shop at Into the AM and find your clothing piece to express what drives you. All right, back to the video. So yes, this was actually something that was suggested to me by one of you, the viewers out there, and that is talking about kind of the next step, the next progression in the aquarium hobby for those intermediate fish keepers. The first thing that I'm gonna suggest is trying something totally different that a lot of you probably have not done because it's not a huge part of the hobby, and that is to try a brackish aquarium. Brackish water is a mixture of salt water and fresh water. And this is what happens in nature when a river or a stream or something meets the ocean or a sea and that water blends and anything that lives in that area, like estuaries, lives in brackish water. So I have things like brackish puffers, brackish gobies, mud skippers. I've got some mollies in one of mine. Um, I've got some very rare fish, some blennies. So I've got a few different setups with brackish water because I too got a little bit bored with only keeping fresh water and wanted to try some things that were different and try some fish that I couldn't keep in fresh water. So if you wanna get a little bit salty, but you're not into reef tanks or fowler tanks, and you wanna see about how you can keep some fish differently, then get your hands uh, on some salt, some reef salt, some marine salt, and try brackish. My next advice, if you are getting bored in the hobby, is to try some rare fish. Now, rare fish can be difficult, especially in these times when we're still kind of getting out of the pandemic and, you know, certain uh, things that were shipped before are hard to get from other countries, but getting your hands on some rare fish can be very fun. Now, part of the fun is learning about the fish. So it's a fish that's not common, something that you don't find in stores all the time. So learning about them, doing the research. Also, while you're trying to find those fish and trying to order them or whatever it is, you have time to really do that research, but also set up the tank for them and get it perfect or what you think is perfect for what their needs are gonna be. And that's a very fun process. Now I have some fish that are quite rare. I talked about my blennies in the brackish tank. Those are very rare. I've only seen them one time in a fish store and they were like 40 something dollars a piece. And this is at a store where they sell fish really cheap. So I'm imagining that a lot of stores are gonna sell them for 60, 70 dollars or more. I've got mud skippers, which I have quite a bit of them, but people can't find them anywhere in the country or the world right now, depending on where you live. So those are quite rare. And it is fun to have some fish that uh, maybe not everyone keeps because for one, if you are successful in breeding them, maybe you can sell them at local fish clubs or something like that. So there's kind of a, a little exclusivity there, but also just the fact that you have something that a lot of people don't have can be fun. And as long as you you know treat them well and, and house them properly and learn from them, they can be very enjoyable. Before I go on, do me a big favor, hit that like button. It really does help my channel and it helps the algorithm. And if you don't mind, please do consider subscribing to my channel. I would very much appreciate it. The next thing that I would suggest if you are getting a little bit bored and you're past that beginner stage is to try fish that are a little bit more difficult. Now, besides the whole brackish thing and the rare fish, maybe you just wanna stick with freshwater fish. Maybe you only have one or two tanks and you don't wanna have 
a bunch of different types of fish and different types of water parameters. So try to get your hands on something that might be a little bit more difficult, like discus as an example. So I've had discus, I have some still. I've had varying success with discus. I lost some, I still have a pair that have been alive with me for, I don't know, a few years now. So they're doing well, but they are more challenging than some of the other fish that I keep. So regardless of what type of fish that you're trying to get, if you have something that requires a little bit more care, it requires you to not be automatic, for you to think more about, you know, the proper food and, you know, the water temperatures and, you know, the right pH levels and water, you know, water hardness and flow and all these different types of things that come into the husbandry of keeping aquarium fish. It's just a little bit more amplified when you're keeping a fish that's more difficult. So that's something that you could try if you're getting a little bit bored. The next thing that I would suggest is something that I've done quite a bit in the past, but it's a lot of work, which is why I don't do it now, and that is breeding. Having some fish breed can be challenging depending on the species. Now, if you just get some guppies or something, some live bears and put them in an aquarium and watch them spawn, and eh, that's maybe not that big of a challenge, but maybe there's some other fish that you have that are more difficult to breed or you want to try something that's more difficult to breed, like the discus as an example. Or, you know, maybe there's a certain cichlid, um, like for example, I've bred my five star generals and I've had challenges and some successes with that. And um, having some kind of breeding program can kind of stimulate the mind and get you thinking about things. So not only are you having to set up breeding tanks and pair fish off and figure out the best way for for them to spawn and to raise a fry successfully, different types of food. Um, but you know, it's also gonna have you probably have more tanks. So that can be good if you are bored or it could be a detriment if it's, you know, adding a lot of work that you don't wanna put into. But setting up a breeding program, especially if it's something that requires a little bit more thought and work can be rewarding. Now I do wanna stress here that it's very important that if you are going to get into breeding fish, you have to have a plan of what you're gonna do with the successful spawns once those fish have bred. So what you don't want to have happen is, you know, spawn a bunch of angel fish, and now you have 300 angel fish and you don't know what to do with them. So have a plan beforehand on how to sell them, give them away, talk to fish stores, etc., to make sure that you have a plan on moving those fish away because I've seen plenty of people that really get into breeding and then the next thing you know, they've got 10 tanks of just the same fish that is just growing out because they don't know what to do with them. The next suggestion that I have is one of my favorites and that's experimentation. Now, experimentation can be multiple things. It could be experimenting with different types of fish that we've talked about or different water parameters, fresh water, brackish water, breeding and all that. But it could be also like DIY stuff. So that might be building your own aquarium filter. Modifying filters can be fun. Experimenting with different types of scapes. It could be experimenting with building things for your aquariums. In fact, I made a series on building DIY 3D backgrounds out of foam and concrete and stuff like that. And that was, you know, very engaging for myself. I still enjoy my 3D backgrounds that I've built. So these are all things that can be enriching for yourself. Hopefully they're improving the lives of your fish and they're fun. So uh, experimenting, doing a lot of DIY stuff can also kind of bring you to the next level when it comes to fish keeping. Now the last thing on my list is kind of taking you away from fish keeping and that's to branch out. Branch out by doing things beyond just keeping fish. That might be getting into inverts. Uh, it could be different types of snails or crabs or shrimp as an example, which is a big part of the hobby. Maybe it's kind of moving away from animals and getting into plants. So maybe you could cultivate plants, you can sell plants. So these are all different things that you could try as far as branching out. I would also consider like paludariums as kind of stepping away from aquarium. So a paludarium, and you can see a couple in here, like the one back there, which is a paludarium is part water, part land. So I use those for my mudskippers as an example. So you could do like planted paludariums or brackish paludariums, and you can do animals that live on land, animals that live on water, animals that go in both the land and the water. So there's lots of different things that you could do and still kind of stay in the whole aquarium keeping, but it's a little bit different and kind of makes your mind work, the creativity juices flow, and uh, definitely you won't be bored.
So hopefully this video gave you some ideas on different things that you can try to kind of reinvigorate yourself, get excited about aquariums and brackish water, fresh water, paludariums, whatever it is, try something different. Hopefully this helped. If you wanna learn about brackish water and mudskippers, watch this video right here.